pretty cool. So, Swish, welcome. Thank you. We are BTV on air. on air. You can hold it. Oh, it's nice. fun. Yeah, hold oh, on. This is so yeah. colorful. I'm put it, put it, like, put it into the camera. Like, with, with okay, the camera. I'm gonna drop that water. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming in. A real honor to, to be with you. One of, I mean, there's so many things to say about this guy, but one of Canada's top young entrepreneurs, uh, TEDx speaker, is you're involved with all kinds of different technology <laughs> companies. Uh, you are a public brand manager for uh, sure, Trevor, sure. and we'll talk about what that means. <laughs> I, when, like, my team got me all the notes of like who you were, and I was like, oh my god, this guy's amazing. And then I saw this thing, Trevor, and I was like, what does that even mean? So we'll talk about that. Um, you're working on a book. You're living in New York City now. You were originally from Singapore, then moved to Canada, and now you're here. So Perfect. that's uh, is that all true? Is everything true? Yeah, so Guys, far. good job. Yeah. Only good raises. So um, <laughs> that is good stuff. And then uh, we just been communicating on email for a couple months, and happy to make this happen, man. Definitely. So welcome to the show. Appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Again, like you said, we were born in Singapore, um, and hyper competitive environment, like the best place to grow up in as a child. child. <laughs> and, <I> know, <laughs> and for me, honestly, when I was growing up, like the biggest thing I had was like a chip on my shoulder the entire time. Yeah. I had an older brother, Hi Binu, if you're out there, he's in Ecuador right now. What's up? Hola, <laughs> Vino. We're and bilingual brand. He's like the like smartest guy I know in my life. Yeah? Like What's he doing in Ecuador? Uh, he just grad trip for law school. Cool. Finished top of his class from U of T Law. And awesome. I'm like, all right, great. Thanks, bud. Good, good, like, elevated bar he has for me right now. But he, like, literally did everything faster than I did. And I'm like, I'm going to get up there. Yeah. And so for me, like, when I moved to Canada, one of the early things I took up was debating. Because yeah. he had one world the year I basically like started debating in grade seven and I'm like I'm gonna get there and so in grade 11 I made it to the final he was actually coaching me that year yeah. and I lost <laughs> and I came second but and you were like dude that your coaching was not good <laughs> yeah. that, that was the problem yeah it's like I got to the final you sucked at coaching being said I mean for, for me like entrepreneurship was kind of like a great outlet also because nobody in my family has been an entrepreneur Oh and really? No one. So you were the first entrepreneur? The first. And so for me, like it was my dad's dream. So that's why I love saying I'm living my dad's dream right now. That's cool. Building something from nothing. That's cool. And so, He's super proud of you? Yeah, literally. And yeah. like every opportunity and that where came is that? Way, he bets Singapore? Singapore still, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And mom is in Singapore as well? Mom's in Calgary. No, mom's in Calgary. So you and mom came to Canada together or what? Um, yeah, us three. Okay. Like the, you, mom, and pack. brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The and tribe. Yeah. And then my brother now is in Toronto. I'm in New York. We're all in like four different places. So why Canada from Singapore? And then why New York from Canada? Primarily because I think from an educational perspective, it was really good. Like the universal healthcare also helps. And like, yeah. I don't know, my parents were really like insistent on me growing up in a good culture. Yeah. And for me, Singapore, I think was good. But like, again, it was like a bit too hyper competitive. Like there was also a race problem in the workplace sometimes. why do you think it was so competitive i think people are just born to like they're, they're there's a lot of tiger parenting for sure like parents yeah. who come out and tell their children like you need to beat the other kid around you like yeah. not physically but like, like on grades hopefully <laughs> <laughs> like literally grade wise and then i think early on too there's just like you know things like class assistants prefects who all get selected in kindergarten Really? So like you're already like gunning for something when you're in that young age, right? And for me, I'm like, I'm just relieved to be in school, like, great. And like other people are like, no, we gotta work, we gotta work, we gotta work. And that was just not like conducive for me. So Swish, you came from Canada to New York City. Yeah. And how long have you been here? I've been here for a month now. Oh, so you're brand new here. Right. Well, like I visited a few times, but yeah, living here for sure. So what kind of stuff are you into right now? What are you working on? So three things primarily. Yep. One is my wearable startup, which is one of the reasons I'm primarily here as a guy called Trevor Booker, who's a Brooklyn Nets player. Yep. Shout out to Trevor Booker. What's up, Trevor? <laughs> Best guy in the world. Uh, and he invested in my company, brought me out here. He's super kind, incredible. Just taught me the ropes when it came to like managing and navigating the sports industry, yep. which is where the primary wearable is used right now. And what, are you, what is the wearable? It's basically a tracker that goes in your knee and it okay. connects to an AR headset okay. that a coach or trainer could then just see their player's biometrics all in real time. So while they're moving on the court, you can assess when to pull them out and when to put them back in based Fantastic. on balance, torsion, heartbeat per minute, etc. And is it a sensor or is it? It's like, is it? like a patch. It's, it's like patch. a very light patch. And yeah. what, what is measuring the actual biometrics? Like what, there's what? two. We will go by electromagnetic pulses yep. primarily. And yep. so those are like the standard. And then secondly is trying to look at like any acute action. So anytime your like knee goes really weird, a sensor will pop out. So, so I want to back, I want to yeah. get into all that in a second, but I want to focus for a second because there's a lot of people out there that number one, want to do a tech idea. Yes. And number two, 
you landed a superstar celebrity mm -hmm. athlete right. to, to back you. How did that happen? So he DM'd me on Instagram in November. <laughs> Gary V. Right. I swear to God, Gary V. Gary posted uh, in November being like, describe yourself in one sentence. And I yep. knew Gary and we followed each other and yep. stuff. So I was like, you know, if I say something funny, he probably will like it. So I'm like, I am the best young entrepreneur you met. Well, right, I'm just joking. I put like a little wink there and all that. Like I wasn't trying to be But you weren't totally joking. No, 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 I am joking. I, I don't okay. think I am. But like at the same time, I mean, he liked it and a couple of other people liked it. And Trevor saw that it was a top comment. And so I think he just saw my profile, reached out to me, and he I just reached out to you. Cold. He DM me, and I what, what honestly, did he say? I didn't see the mess. It was really weirdly typed, so I just thought it was a hoax. <laughs> like it was like caps lock. Like he 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 caps venture capital. I'm like this is definitely a hoax. Like someone's asking me for money at the end from Bangladesh, but at the same time, like literally, like he DM me, and I only found it nine days later. Um. So okay. So this is amazing. So then so then you guys met, and then what has been. So he invested in your company yeah. as, an, as a venture capitalist. And then he like also wanted me to join his VC firm that he had built. Okay. And so I'm doing that like part-time right now. I can't do full-time. And what are you doing there? Literally any young entrepreneur I know that has a good idea, I'll bring them to Trevor. Fantastic. Yeah. And I'll source that deal. And, and how do you, how, how, so it's interesting because we, I, we get a ton, I mean a ton of questions about how do I raise money? Yeah. And how do I get access to the investors? What would you say, um, as someone who's bringing entrepreneurs to Trevor and the fund, yeah. what do you look for? And then what is he looking for? So I think if I was looking for someone, it would be someone whose idea would be something that still existed like 15 to 20 years from now. That definitely is something yeah. that resonates with my mind. Something that's definitely you know important to me is, is the person actually like cool? That's really important because for everybody that's watching, that's like, I have an idea, I have an idea, I have an idea. It's, it's actually relationships maybe are even more important than the idea, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. all right, so you do, you're doing that. So you say you're writing for Google and LinkedIn. So what does yeah. that look like? That literally came up because I'm like, I've, for the last two years, I've been writing for LinkedIn, one year as their campus editor, which if any college student is watching this, highly encourage you to get the campus editor program. Um, you what is get it? LinkedIn premium for free. Okay. And you will Wait, meet a lot of cool people. Campus editor. Campus program. editor. So yeah, let's yeah. put that in the Yeah, list. and it's incredible. You basically just have to write an article per month on a student in your campus. And you get premium for free, you'll connect with great people from LinkedIn and they'll promote your post. So you'll build up a following there. It is it is the most underrated platform. Like I think I have forty thousand followers there now. Yeah. But like my reach is way beyond like one million on every post Interesting. I make. Mean. Every post I make. Interesting. You know? And I'm like Why is that? It's primarily because like, I think A, there's not a lot of content creators on LinkedIn, so it's not a saturated market like Instagram or Twitter or anything like that. And then B, I mean, the algorithm is beautiful right now if you are a writer. You know, if you're a person who's a photographer, maybe not LinkedIn, like right. the photos don't actually do as well as like text-based posts, but LinkedIn is great. Do you have to be a college student? Uh, to be the campus editor, yes. Are you a college student? I am a college student. Okay, so, yeah, where do you yeah. go? University of Toronto. Oh, I didn't know that. Going to third year, yeah. For some, for some reason, I thought you weren't in college. Okay, so yeah. so that's interesting. And we do have a lot of people that watch yeah. from universities. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I speak at universities. I know that you do some speaking, speaking as well, but I speak at universities a lot about different tools. That's a really helpful tool. Mm -hmm. So, what's going on with Google? So they basically like the headhunted me. Thank you. <laughs> they headhunted me through LinkedIn, and it was great because now I get to like write for them entirely on LinkedIn and Medium. So they're promoting various products like Pixel, yep. and they want to get it out to the broader market. And I'm like, look, I can. Get Get that done yep. and so not only do i use my personal account sometimes to push stuff but google has like three million followers on like linkedin so it's incredible so they hire you to write content right with four other people so i'm not the only one there but yep. one of the people i am one of the clients i'm trying to go after right now is american express they don't have anyone writing for them on linkedin and on so, linkedin on linkedin oh so this is interesting so so th there's actually a market for big companies to hire people to write for them on, for on LinkedIn. linkedin yeah and it's the best b2b platform so they yeah. should be doing that you know, so, so how do you identify those opportunities? I mean, well, the Google one came to me directly. So yep. it was like an inbox and I was like, oh, mail. And I was like, another Trevor. But let's, <laughs> but let's say you're 19, 20, 21 years old. You're watching this in the middle yeah. of America. You're in your dorm room. You're like, I'm so bored. I mm -hmm. want to do something. Uh, what would you advise? Like, what were the first three steps you would advise them to take to be, actually be able to do this kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, a it's honestly like look at potentially building a following on LinkedIn, and yeah. that literally can come about just by posting once a day on what you did during your day. Okay. If you are competent enough to spell correctly and have proper grammar, you are beating ninety-five percent of people on the platform. It's, it's true. sad to say, but like even Gary has terrible spelling on the yeah. platform, and that's why I don't think his posts do as well. And when you start to really like get a following, what, what would you say? 
good following would be. Oh, anywhere after it's LinkedIn, more than five thousand followers. Then you can identify there. a company exactly. that you think is interesting. A small business, big company, and email them. And you say what? And you just say, hey, I built a following of over blank blank. I have these many impressions per week. Yep. All the metrics are available. Yep. And this is what exactly I want to write about for your company. Yep. Because a lot of these companies don't write on LinkedIn. So even if you said, I'm going to do it for free for the first month and allow you to see how it is, yep. it's big. And then from there, you can offer them, listen, I'll offer you an article a week, yeah. an article a day, exactly. for this amount of money. Yeah. And that's what you're doing. And that's what I'm doing. Yeah, that's yeah, brilliant. Yeah. And so that's every really, article I write now, that's you That's super it. practical advice yeah. for people. I mean, I love that. Um, what else? What What's else? the third thing? And the third thing now, I mean, if we're a VC, so we've already talked about that, like sourcing deals and really trying to like. And you get a cut of the deal, of the people yeah. you bring That's in. That's actually a very good cut too. So you I'm get like, you get a, a cash value. Or you get an equity. It's a carry. It's a, okay. Yeah, it's a carry. T tell people what. what uh, carry carries. basically is like you take a percentage of the initial deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and for for people that um, that maybe don't have as big of a following but are interested in the VC world, what advice would you, especially young people, what yeah. advice would you give them? Uh, don't reach out to people who are in VC directly by email. Reach out to them via LinkedIn. It's actually more, they're more responsive and they also will not see you as spammy. Um, and the second thing is just attend events. Like VC yeah. and PE are the two hardest industries to break into in finance. So people are not gonna be like, wow, Swish is incredible and offer them a job by email. Right. They're gonna need to see you up front yeah. and actually know who you are. So yeah. go to these events and there's hundreds of them in the city, especially here in New York. How right? do you find it? I literally just go on to like Crunchbase. Crunchbase? Yeah, or I just go and just search up VC events in New York and I'll go to like some. Some of them are a bit sketchy, don't go to those, but like if it's a big firm that you know about that you can like search and like get a Wikipedia link for, I mean, that's probably what I go off. Yep, and, and, and so in terms of networking, for you, mm -hmm. because you've obviously done really, really well fast. Uh, you're, you're what, 20? Just turned 20, yeah. 20, yeah. birthday. Thank you. Um, you're obviously doing a lot of amazing things. You know, a big question that I get at universities, especially at like the CUNY schools, mm -hmm. where 60, 70% of the students are immigrants yeah. who are new to the US. Right. Um, they, they don't fully understand the idea of what networking looks like. Yeah. What is your one or two biggest rules that you have yeah. that have been led you to be successful as a networker? Yeah, one is don't go after like the pretty boy or pretty girl in the room. And what I mean by that literally is there are gonna be people at these events who everyone wants to talk to, right? Yeah. And I'm, they don't have to be pretty, you could be like someone else, right? It could be But really it's just someone person. who's getting all the it's attention. It's just someone who's getting all the attention. Yep. And the problem is so many people miss out on talking to the people around them, like who are just standing around or waiting their turn maybe, or who aren't, like, aren't even interested in talking to them, having their own conversation. Yep. And sometimes you'll find real gems there. And you know, even if you want to go and talk to that person later, you can, but spend like the first 30 minutes talking to the people who are genuinely there in order to have a conversation that can help you, right? So I think that's important, like having an offering that's very multidimensional. I mean, you're, so you can, you, can, you can help them with this campus editor tool, you can, with the writing, you can help them introduce them to a VC, you can basically share your story. Um, and in the book, what's going on with the book? So the book is on personal branding. Uh, tenant name is You Inc. Um, and that cool. came from my mom. Thank you. Love that. <laughs> Thanks, mom. Yeah. At the same time, I mean, for for me, like, I think I think the book is something that I want to do correctly. A lot of people get like ghostwriters and stuff. I'm totally fine with that if you're doing it. But for me, like, this is gonna be part of my legacy. I'm gonna write it entirely. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna. Where are you in the PC. process? I'm actually like done two chapters. Cool. I've already like you know blueprinted the entire thing out. It'll be probably like nine chapters long. Would be too big. But at the same time, you know, each chapter I want to bring in like examples from people. And at the end, like I literally want to have like a list of opportunities that young people can tap into. Like what? Like just names of like grants, names of scholarships, yeah. names of events that they should like look out for. It literally just want to make it like a manual for a young person to pick up and like get ahead. Do you think you'll self-publish or are you looking for a publisher? Publisher right now, yeah. Okay. So Penguin or HarperCollins, one of the two. I have a great friend who just got a book on Harper, so. Cool, uh, so so let's talk about branding for a second because yeah. it's something that we do a lot of here. What do you think are the key pillars to creating a good personal brand? I mean, authenticity for sure. And that's like a vague term, I know, so I'll yeah. go a bit deeper there. It's yeah. like, literally just don't come off as your online avatar, come off as yourself, right? So in the same way when you approach someone, you're not like, you know, a templated LinkedIn message, like congrats on your work anniversary. You're actually like having a real and authentic conversation yeah. with them. Say that, like yeah. literally just say that. Yeah. And the second thing is honesty, like be truthful about who you are and more importantly, be truthful of what you want. Like a lot of people I feel when you're branding yourself, like they don't understand what you do. And if they don't understand what you do in the first minute or 
so, they're just gonna skim by. Yeah. Unless you're like Ty Lopez and bought like the entire YouTube ad in Victoria <laughs> Red, and I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> so like, Straight unless you're that, up. they're gonna skip by you and they won't see you for a week or so until you pop back up in a sponsored post or something. What's been most helpful for you as you've been building your personal brand? Connections, literally just meeting yeah. people. It's all going up. And taking the small meetings that people don't care about, right? Like if you are overlooking people because you think you're too big, you're losing already. You're missing out on like the next upcoming people or just the people who might have a really cool connection to someone and you'd be able to meet them if you had that like incredible like one-on-one. -on -one. All right, so we have other questions here. If, if you don't mind, can we get into some questions for you? Yeah. Um, so th this guy lives in Nigeria mm -hmm. and he wants to start this production of silicon wrist wristbands and phone cases in his country. Cool. Um, and he wants to know if he should raise venture capital mm -hmm. or not. Probably not. If you can, like, avoid it at all costs. Yeah. Because it's kind of interesting, right? Like, people celebrating the fact that they lost ownership in their company. Like, it's just a weird thought when you think about it. Like, yeah. sure, you can continue your dream, but if you can, like, self-fund yourself, or if there are grants within your country, or if you're able to build a minimal viable product and, like, sell it out to five people, use that income, and then put it back into distribution or into manufacturing, yeah. That's probably the way I would do it. You know, it's so funny because yeah. I, I, I advise all these different companies and they all want to raise money. And in yeah. some cases I help them with their pitch to raise money. Mm -hmm. um, so me and you should definitely talk about like sending you stuff too. But yeah. I am 100% I am in agree, agree, agreement with you. Like mm -hmm. I think right now, if you can avoid raising money, you should avoid it. It's a lot of work to find an investor. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like just tomorrow I'm gonna say I have an idea and then Swish is gonna invest in it or Nick is gonna invest in it. Or I'll like in it, log like, on to AngelList. Or, and it's done. Like, <laughs> yeah. you actually have to put in 50, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 hours into yeah. finding the right investor. So instead, I think it's yeah. smarter to put those one, two, three, four, 500 hours into actually building something and finding clients and making a revenue yeah. on an idea. And the key word there is the right investor too, right? Like yeah. a lot of people pick investors without thinking what network, what type of like skills can they- How much time they can put exactly, into it. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, you know, a lot of people who go on Shark Tank, I mean, Mark Cuban, for example, is a great example of an investor who sometimes has just not been able to spend time in the companies he has, right? He's like hundreds of them, right? I'm not saying if you had a deal from Shark Tank and you got it from Mark Cuban, you should be sad. Like I actually have a friend who did and yeah, he's incredible. Really? Yeah. Okay, cool. He's yeah. cr just crushing it. Yeah, I bet, I bet. Yeah. But at the yeah. same time, it's like so many of these people, I think, are so reliant on VCs, but at the same time, don't realize that, hey, if I can pick a VC who can generally spend a lot of time with me after I get the investment, that could be- I mean, you're living the dream, man. Yeah. Your investor reached out to you. Reach, yeah. Like, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's the dream right But there. I didn't go for it. Like, you know, like, I didn't, like, put out, like, I am looking for capital, you know? I was going to self-fund this entire thing. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. And I think that that's 100% right. Look for the investor, how much time they have, how much energy they have, how much of their connections they're willing to yeah. give you. Like. You have to realize that you, for for a bad investor, mm -hmm. you are simply a number. Yeah. You are one out of a hundred in their portfolio because they know that they need that hundred for one of the for the the, the other ninety nine that will fail. Yeah, they're banking on one of the one hundred to so they don't really, really do. even care which one of you succeeds. They just sad need truth. one of you to succeed. It's a sad truth. That's a bad investor. Yeah, there are other investors, and I have relations with a lot of investors that are so invested. Right. Like I know Gary Vee when he invests in someone, yeah. He yeah. he's all in. Yeah. Like you see with Pure Wow and like mm -hmm. all these things. when so find those types of investors that care about your success, about your success as swish, mm -hmm. not about your success as one out of a hundred because I need you to I need somebody to return. Yeah. Great. Um, motivation man. <laughs> this is a question we get all the time. Right. But this came in from from Nasara in Ghana. Um Basically, just saying, listen, I'm in my final stretches of exams. Oh God. Uh, I have, I have, up until September, they so so he, he Nis, I think Nisar is a man or a woman, or whatever. This person has two or three more months of exams. Right. They're really struggling. Yeah. Um. And 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 I want to kind of do this. I want to serve Nisar, but I want this to be kind of a scalable piece of value. So, for the people that are trying to figure out how to stay motivated, what is your advice? as a highly motivated entrepreneur. I think if you're looking to get motivated, the number one thing you should try to go for is, is look for inspiration. In my opinion, there's a difference between the two. They're always used synonymously. Like inspiration is intrinsic. It comes from you. It's something you can employ at any point in your life. Motivation is something you derive from someone else. By watching a video, you feel like that inertia for five hours after watching a Gary Vee video, that's motivation. Yep. But literally like, if you want true inspiration, yep. you have to look deeper within yourself and A, ask yourself, why am I doing this? What is the worst case scenario with my life and why am I scared about that? And B, 
what is the alternative world? And the alternative world for me is a world I am terrified of. It's a world where I'm not motivated, where I feel like my dreams aren't able to like actually come into reality. Yep. And it's a world where I'm just doing what everyone else does because that's what society tells you to do. That's scary as shit to me, right? Yep. So there is, you know, even if, I, mean, I understand that compared to many other people, I'm quite privileged, right? And I, I definitely check my privilege a lot. But this is one thing that privilege has nothing to do with, which is what are your fears and can you take those fears and make them strengths? Mm -hmm. That's what I love to do. You know, and I, I run away from that every day. I literally wake up sometimes thinking how lucky am I am to be able to like, not even be in New York, but be able to just work on my dream. Yeah. Not work on someone else's dream. Yeah, uh, you know? I completely agree. And I think that, you know, like, so, so my, when I read this question, I thought to myself, okay, why is it so hard for you to stay motivated? Yeah. Like that, that for me, like, the, the people that ask me, how do I stay motivated? I'm already like, ooh. Yeah. And here's the thing. That's right? a hard, like, that's that's gonna be a hard thing for me to teach you. But here's the thing, you know, even for me, it's not like, you know, when I go for lunch or anything, I'm like 100% like money, 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 like, let's go, right? Like, I'm sometimes not motivated in particular times of my day as well, right? It's yep. very hard to stay motivated for 24 hours. Yep. But if you wanna really figure out, like, when is my productivity block? Like, pick out the times where you feel like you're at the highest point in your life. Yep. Like, you feel really good, you feel like your mind is in the right place. Block that time off instead of going to happy hour and drinking and then literally just spend time working on whatever you think is important to you. Yep. And then take the other time off, right? If you want to, I'm not the type of person, I think Gary preaches this a lot, which is he asks someone like on air, like, do you even rest? And like, you know, Gary is 99% correct about everything, but the 1% thing I don't agree with is hit like work-life balance for him. Oh, right? and, and I think that he, even he would tell you he that has, he, that's, that's, that's just for him, like you I shouldn't agree. do this. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So, so a lot of people need to realize that like, if you want to have proper work-life balance, it comes down to priorities. And if you want to stay motivated during that time, it comes down to setting reasonable goals for yourself. So not comparing yourself to someone else yep. who is 20 chapters ahead yep. while you're on chapter one, because that's just going to make you sad. Yep. Continue working on your own goals per week. Yep. And that's that's just the simple way to stay motivated. And I, I love I, I love that. I love that not comparing yourself. And it's, it's, it's so, everyone's saying it, but like it's so... True. Yeah, and and this has been really important for everything for, for the last 15 years of my life, even for the last 20 years of my life, saying those things out loud to other people. Mm. Yeah. Because then they're like watching. Like yeah. I actually I it's funny, I I hardly ever ask anyone for advice. Right. Because I, I do I try to stay pretty internal, mm -hmm. but I am a huge fan of of vocalizing what I want to do, do. Yeah. to other people mm -hmm. because then they're watching me. Yeah. I actually do really well. Like that's why I love having a team because mm -hmm. I say things and then after a month or two when they're like, yeah, what are we gonna do with this? I'm like, oh right, let me get back on that. Yeah. I think that once you say something, and for me, once I say something about 25 times, that's yeah. my number, yeah. 25. Yeah. So I will say something and then I'll say it again. And these guys know, like, I'll say it again. Once I hit 25, it's like, we're doing it. No, no, it <laughs> should be done. It by should now. be done. Like there's oh, yeah. no more. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so, like moving to Latin America, or, or starting a Spanish brand, Latin American brand, or starting opening an office, or like, signing a million dollars of revenue, mm -hmm. like all of these things. You know, we're talking about nation branding lately, and it's like we've talked about nation branding for the last couple of months, and we're getting closer. And finally, we just nailed a, a nation branding deal. So it's like, mm -hmm. for me, it's the process of, of verbalizing it, not only for myself. Right. But for the people that, and this is why I think that back to your networking point and your connection point, it's important to have people around you mm -hmm. that get that. And it's not like they're actually going to hold you accountable for that. Yeah. Even if you don't follow through with it. Yeah. They're at least like, yo, what what's up? Switch. What's up with the, what's up with the work? Like you said, yeah. you were going to get acquired probably in the next 24 months. Yeah. Like, what's up with that? Yeah. And you could say, well, oh, we're, we're, we decided not to, yeah. which is fine. Or yeah, we're a couple months away. Or we just did. Oh, we just did. And in, but in which case, yeah. yeah. But in which case, it's per, I agree with you. Because like, the reason why I like a lot of these people, like Lewis House, for example, yeah. I love Lewis House. Like, I think he's genuine, I think he's humble, I think he's incredible. He put out all of his goals beforehand. Like he had a Gary Vee episode, I remember a long time ago, where he said, I'm writing a book and it's gonna be the New York Times bestseller. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people on like in the comments laughed at him. We're like, what the hell is this? He was a, he was a trucker, right? Yeah. Like who is this trucker? Like what are you talking about? Oh, he was a trucker? He was a trucker, I throw a trucker. And, and so it was crazy now to be able to see like every goal he set for himself to like make the All-American team for football, to be a New York Times bestseller, to meet incredible people, to have an incredible business, to live in LA. These goals that he set forth for himself that people laughed at him for yeah. came to reality. Where can people find you? Uh, go Swish. 
G O S W I S H. I'm so, I'm not a narcissist. I just like my last name is Goswami. My first name. Was Dude, Swish. no nobody here is judging you. Okay, that's fine. And a little narcissism is not that cool. And then on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and then that's Facebook. all. That's your handle. Yeah, let's go Swish. Those, yeah, so then, follow this young man. Yeah, He's great. incredible. I love the energy, brother. Appreciate thank it. you for coming in. Thank you. I really appreciate it's it. Really fun. Best can best continued success, guys. Remember, it's your hour. It's your dream. It's your life. So go get it. Because if you don't, ain't nobody else will. Right, no, Swish? Not at all. Not at all. Have a good day.